in the circle too. You would never guess that she was an underclassman just based on her presence. A lot of confidence, this being her first actual Pac-12 conference play that she's had ever in her career. You wouldn't guess it if you didn't know. Let's take a look at the defense lining up behind Elena. Same as it was yesterday for the Stanford Cardinal. Schultz, Skinnelsberger, Cals across the outfield. Inouye, Young, Huff, Sparakis, Montana Dixon putting down the signs behind the dish. And Vonner, the sophomore, but as Jenna mentioned, really the freshman because all the sophomores on both of these squads right, did not get to see Pac-12 play, as we know. Season canceled just as things were about to ramp up at the end of March in 2020. So here we go, game number two between the Cardinal and the Huskies. Washington took round one last night by a score of four to nothing, but Stanford definitely left a lot of runners on base. They had their chances, so we can see what they can do today. Jenna Becerra, Kate Scott, so happy to have you with us here on the Pac-12 Network as Wander's first pitch outside ball one. Fifth year, one of the many super seniors for the Washington Huskies. Sis Bates, number 22, leading off as she has for a long time for these dogs. One in there, strike one. That's what we're going to see from Elena Vodder. That pitch right there, she stays down in the zone and just grazes the corners. It's rare for her to leave anything over the plate that's meaty. Washington going to have to capitalize and just hit the ball where it's pitched. So it's one for three yesterday. Walk, run scored on Flores' two-run base knock in the third that really broke the game open. And Vodder finds the corner there, gets ahead in the count one and two. Just take a look at that spot. That's not what you're looking for as a hitter. Sis might have thought that one a little inside. Calls time. We want to get as many pitchers pitchers as we can. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. To third base and in away there, one out. Umpires, the same as they were yesterday, but just a little tick around the clock, right? A little rotation. So Brandon Bloom calling the balls and strikes today. Fred Barker down at first. Jerry McGuire at second. And Jim Bertuzzi, yesterday's home plate umpire, down the third baseline. So one down. Sis Bates heads back to the dugout. Here's the junior from Houston, Texas, playing at third base with Atley over at second. Bailey Klingler. First pitch, big cut. Strike one. That's a big out for Elena Vodder to get to, to actually put Sis Bates back in the dugout in that situation. She has so much speed, so to keep her off the base pass and start on that note, it's a good tone that they're setting as a defense for the Cardinal. We were a lot of hard contact yesterday, but didn't get her first hit until the seventh. This will be a hit because it was hit so deeply into the hole, even though it didn't leave the infield. So an infield hit for Klingler, she'll take it. It's a great response from Klingler. I mean, you don't want to do too much with that pitch. Again, low and in, just gets enough. Emily Young gets there, but too much speed deep in the hole like that. Dickinson, a high alum, digging for first and gets there. So that'll bring up our player of the game, other than Gabby Plain, the pitcher yesterday, Morgan Flores. Got to chat with Morgan after the game, had a great conversation after she caught a great game, 10th complete game shutout for Gabby this season, and then had the big base knock too, the two-run RBI single in the third that helped the dogs to that 4-0 win. One and one the counts. Flores just off to a great start last year. In addition to all the freshmen who were disappointed that Pac-12 didn't get played, Morgan too, and she had four homers, 28 RBI. One in there, strike two. And she had earlier this season four consecutive games where she hit a home run. Just so much power, but it's tough to do that when you're working the corners the way Elena Vodder is right now. Klingler at first. One out. Here's the one-two to Flores. Turns on it foul. And for those of you who missed yesterday's opener, let's take a look back at that big base knock that broke this game open. Hitting it right back up where it was pitched. The timely hitting, too. It's one thing to hit well. It's another thing to hit and be clutch. And she nailed it yesterday. That made it 3-0. They attack on a fourth, and that was that. Off speed from Vonner. This is outside, 2-2. Two and two. Kansas City, Missouri native at a Staley High School. 
won the first nine collegiate decisions of her career last year. Had a complete game win over Tennessee. Down the line, but just swerves foul. Just a tick too late. And that's why Tegan Cowles tends to, we talked about this yesterday, she shades a little bit towards the line. She's got so much speed. It's a big gap in right center, but both her and Gindelsberger have that speed. But for things like that, if that would have been just a few feet to the left and it would have been fair, you try to minimize the bases. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Goes off speed again. Flores able to foul it out of play. Stay alive. It's a great at-bat so far for Flores. I mean, her timing has been so key. With some of these off-speed pitches, she's been able to foul off, protect. Take a look at that gap in right center field, too. Anything on that outer half. Yeah, She's going for this big yard. Flores to left field. And Schultz is there, two down. But like you said, a good battle between those two. Saw a couple of those yesterday between Plain and a couple of Stanford batters. That's what we're going to see today. I mean, this is awesome. Ace versus ace. It gets me fired up seeing mm -hmm. this in this last week in the Pac 12. So two down. Klingler over at first for Washington as Vonner tries to get out of his first inning unscathed. Here's the junior, Sammy Reynolds. Looking for that outside corner. Doesn't get it. Ball one. Reynolds 0 for 2 yesterday. Couple of walks. Scored the first run of the day on that Taryn Atley sack fly to left. Another off-speed pitch there from Elena Vodder. And sometimes it's a little bit low. Sometimes she might not catch the zone every single time, but just showing it is what's going to help maybe keep the hitters off balance. They have to have that timing if they want to hit that pitch. This is again 3-0. Eagle eyes from Sammy Reynolds. Remarkable freshman campaign from Sammy. All Women's College World Series team, Pac-12 All-Freshman team, All-Pac-12 team. And draws the four-pitch walk. So Klingler will track down to second. Reynolds now over at first is the DP, Noel Heen. We get to see Vaughn for the first time. When we talked to Coach Tar yesterday and asked her how she thought Gabby was doing, she said, well, she's still trying to find the zone a little bit. She's figuring it out. Which, you know, for Gabby is still a very high level of performance. <laughs> right. But in this case, I think that's something that Elena Vodder is now doing because this is her first appearance on this weekend. And you talked about it earlier, the umpires also rotate. So sometimes they have different preferences or different things that they like in terms of the zone. So it takes a minute to just figure it out and get your rhythm going. Montana Dixon, one of the super seniors for Stanford, out to have a chat with her. Montana, a great day yesterday. On the defensive side of things, still looking to get the bat going, but made a couple of great heads up plays. No one you'd rather have catching a freshman slash sophomore pitcher. Morgan Flores and Montana Dixon, a couple of the best backstops here in the Pac-12. And after that little conversation, what do you know? Strike one. <laughs> Funny how that works out, isn't it? Yeah. Coach comes and talks to you, your catcher talks to you. It works. Kind of like you better throw a strike, right? <laughs> <laughs> two on, two down. No score here in the first. And strike two. Take a look at that location. Wow. That is exactly what you want to do as a pitcher. Tough to hit. Strike away from heading back to the dugouts. Goes off speed. Ball one. He won for three yesterday with a walk. Senior out of Southern California. Couple of doubles, seven home runs, 15 RBI so far on the season. That one misses inside. Two and two. I think the Huskies are doing a good job at just seeing the ball all the way in. So far, they've already seen a decent amount of pitches from Elena Vada early in the game, and that's going to help them for the second time through the lineup. Even when you're on deck, you're able to kind of see, hey, what are they seeing in front of me? What's the pattern? What's she throwing? Strike three. Got her swinging. 
Still 0-0 as we head to the home half of the first inning and take a look at the Stanford lineup. Same as it was yesterday. And again, they sprinkled in a number of hits, left a number of runners on base, so we know that they can get something going. Maybe something a little more than that. That is day two seeing Gabby playing for these batters. Tegan Cowles to lead off for the Sanford Cardinal. And oh, look who's back in the circle today. <laughs> it's Gabby playing. Shocker, right? You, you think they, they're trying to clinch a series or something? What do you think? Yeah, I think I think they might be. Still, still have a chance at the Pac-12 title. <laughs> the Magic number one for UCLA playing the Wildcats in Arizona. Now in Tucson, but Gabby dominates yesterday in the opener. So relaxed, just drops right off the table. Keeps some off bounds, keeps some guessing, but she can go upstairs too. Just what a mix she's got in her repertoire. Went the full seven, just four hits, nine Ks on 86 pitches. Didn't walk a batter. Her 10th shutout of the season, 32nd of her career. And uh, she's now a fairly decent 28 and one on the season. As Cal steps in, first pitch up and out of play. Tegan, the Columbia River High School alum up in Ridgefield, Washington. You think she takes a little something extra when she's playing Washington because she's from Washington? I always wondered that. I know it's different for every student athlete. I think so. For some, it might be more subconscious than conscious, but there's got to be a little something there. You saw on the graphic, picked up her 250th career hit yesterday, one of just seven Stanford Cardinal ever to play here, to be able to say that, so pretty darn cool. And to do it off of Gabby Plains, no easy feat either. That's a good point. Two-time NFCA All-Region Team honoree. Here's the one one to Cals. That one a little bit high, ball two. Different umpires, different zones, right? <laughs> it's part of the game, you know? It's part of the adjustments that you have to make. We talk about it, adjusting from game to game, at bat to at bat. These two have seen a, a, a lot of each other over the last four seasons. Here's the 2 1. Low ball three. So this is just off from Vodder. Playing, just figuring out the zone. Good height, keeping it low in the zone. But good eyes from Tegan Kelsey. That's not a hitter's pitch, that is for sure. I'm playing just pinpoint with her accuracy yesterday, so expect more of the same today. Here's the 3 1. That one catches the corner <laughs> as Cal started to head down to first base. The count goes full. Uh, Good height again there. Catches the corner that time. Yeah, hey, if you're Cowzo, you, you, you'll take a yeah, walk right? off Gabby Plain. No again. doubt. Here's a 3 2. Cows. Pops this one up. Shallow right field. Who got it? You got it. Jaden Alchin, the center fielder, will get it. So one out as we take a look. At the rest of the defense, lining up behind playing today. Again, same as it was yesterday. Reynolds, Alchin, Willis across the outfield grass. Klingler, Bates, Atley, Lynch across the infield. And the super, super senior, the six-year Morgan Flores in the squad. So one down. Here's the junior out of Hamilton High School down in Arizona, Taylor Ginnisberger. One for three yesterday. Had just a, a beautiful bump in the sixth, right? That was her hit yesterday. They were understandably, like so many teams do, <laughs> struggling to get hits against Gabby Plain. So Taylor just said, I'm just going to use my wheels to get on base. That's that versatility. you got to use everything that you got. Pull every lever you can to get on base. Gindelsberger to second. Atley's there, two down. That's right, as you just heard from great PA here at Stanford, Eleni Sparakis. Saratoga native, started her career at Santa Clara. Now a grad student here at Stanford, starting first baseman pretty much all season long. This 
swings and misses strike one. And speaking of versatility with Sparakis, you know, she was a shortstop at Santa Clara before transferring. Now as a grad student here at Stanford, she played a little bit of second base early on in the season. Now she's been at first base, kind of solidified her spot there. Which I said, she's just one of those players you can't take out of the lineup at this point. That one just misses ball one. Sparak is looking for a first hit off a plane. 0 for 3 with a strikeout yesterday. Thought she might have had a hit. She was the one who hit that scorcher to Taryn Atley in the sixth that Atley turned into a double play. So made great contact yesterday. Very similar to Klingler for Washington. Just trying to hit one not at somebody today. Here's the 1-1. Swings and misses. Strike two. That's one of the best feelings, just defensively, when you rob someone of a base hit, especially as an infielder. There's just something about it, especially with all the slappers you'll go up against as well. Just taking it from them. <laughs> oh, you just had yourself a, at least a single, didn't ya? <laughs> it's a little pause in play right now. Heather Tar comes out to chat with our home plate umpire, Brandon Bloom. Any idea, Jenna? Honestly, not a clue. Just trying to figure it out. I was trying to see what it could be. I'll throw you the hot be. potato because I had no idea, so. Yeah, it's You're harder good. for us to read their lips, too, with the masks and everything, so. Look at you. <laughs> Got to get them mic'd up. Two down, nobody on. The one two from Gabby Plain. Bounces that one off of her arm. Foul. Sparakis stays alive. Member of the Greek national team. Just gets a little bit jammed there. And those can sting a little bit too when you sort of hit it into yourself. Yeah, I would imagine. Got yeah. a little spin on it. Hot day out here, Stanford. And couldn't hold up on that one. A strike three, so. Career, and to do it in Tucson, one of the hardest places to play in the country, let alone just the Pac-12, is really impressive. Literally hit off the top of the building out there in center field. <laughs> Anybody who, who has called a game down in Tucson knows never park in center field, which is where they always have you park, so it's always a fight to see who can park the furthest away back there. It's a really tiny parking lot, or, Sometimes you want to park like right close next to the fence. These are broadcaster problems. Yeah, these but are insider there's been, a, right there's been a number of cracked rental car <laughs> windshields and back glass because of the home runs hit there. It's Kelly Lynch on three pitches. Goes down strikeout number two for Elena Vodder. That's that off-speed pitch. She's so good at it. Any count, too. Talk about being in front. And I said it earlier. It'll make your knees buckle. Ooh. Case in point. <laughs> the sophomore Kelly Lynch will head back to the dugout. The fifth year from Sacramento, the second baseman, Taryn Atley. Earned herself a second start this weekend with the way she played yesterday. Takes strike one. Just one of the most experienced players on this Husky team. And nothing can replace that. Nothing replaces experience, time, the amount of reps that she's seen throughout her career. Sends that one to second baseman Sidney Huff. And two quick outs for Vodder here in the second. Saw what Gabby Plain did in her half of the inning. So I wonder if we're going to have a little, OK, I see you. Now I'm going to try to one up you next time I'm out there in the circle. I think you're calling it early. Might be a little bit of a pitcher's duel. We'll see, of course, whenever you say that. Then, of course, it's a 10-9 <laughs> ball game, right? But maybe not with these two. All right, the freshman out of Ontario, California, down in Southern California who was just really turning it on here at the end of her true freshman campaign, Sarah Willis. One for three yesterday with uh, the hit that brought in the fourth and final run for Washington in their 4 nothing win. Just her third RBI of the season. Got home last night and said, wow, that's hard to believe. What a time to do it. Strike one. Willis, also a pitcher like Vonder. 
But as we know, sometimes, you know, you, you want your freshmen to just focus on one skill as they start to round into form as they get into their Pac-12 careers. Swings and fouls that one off. Strike two as we take a look back at that RBI from last night. And scorched through that left side, perfectly on plane. She was fired up over there at second base too. She's like, yep, I just did that. <laughs> Round of applause for me. Let's go. <laughs> Bringing in the pinch runner, Lily Egan, fellow freshman. That had to be fun, right? Couple of freshmen tag teaming. So the freshman, Vodder, ahead in the count on Willis. Strike away from getting back to the dugout. Off speed, just missed, ball two. Willis, a high school All-American down at Norco. Helped win back-to-back -back CIF Southern section titles, the 2-2. Has that one off as well. You see Dixon back there taking one for the team. She's done that her entire career, too. Just gets a little bit beat up back there, but just so tough. Just tough as nails. Countless times I've seen that happen to her, and she just rolls right along like nothing happened. Yeah, and just gets to a squat for the next few hours. No big deal. <laughs> Off speed. Got her. Third strikeout already for Vodder. Stanford coming up. This night. Un a little underwhelming. That was my fault, though. Choice of restaurant. Shall, shall not be named. All right, here we go. Bottom of the second at Stanford. The first of two games today as Ali Kanashira. First pitch swinging right into the glove of Sammy Reynolds. One out. Well, if the date goes like this for Gabby Plain, it'll be pretty easy to go back to back like she has done all season. We, we talked about how Washington was efficient offensively, you know, seven runs on just four hits. But Gabby Plain, in terms of pitch count, super efficient yesterday, too. Just getting quick outs. That's exactly what you want. She typically throws and starts three games in a weekend in these four game series. So it's always helpful if you can keep some fuel in the tank. And speaking of cheeseburger soup, here is Emily Young. Her first pitch swinging as well. They're going to call that foul. Okay, so we'll give it another go. Thought we had back-to-back -back one pitch outs there. I know, me second. too. Klingler thought so too. <laughs> Having a good time down there at third. Seen a lot of time at second base this year as well. Junior Young. High school in Cincinnati, Ohio, from Mason, Ohio. It's interesting because, understandably, so much softball talent comes from California, right? Arizona, for the obvious reasons. But these two teams especially, and more and more in the Pac-12, I love that we're starting to see them go all across the country and pick players out from ACC territory and Big Ten and SEC. I love that. I think some of that too is with the academics for both Stanford and Washington as well. There's there's a high level there that you have to be at as a student because the student does come before athlete, right? You're student athletes. So Stanford, for example, they recruit nationally because you have to get into school before they can actually give you that official offer. And this is low ball too. Yeah, and that's actually how the first baseman, the, the grad student, right? Uh, uh, Lenny Sparakis from Santa Clara, like, she didn't come here to play softball. She came here to get her masters and then just called up Coach Al, right? And said, hey, right. so I'm here now. Can I play? Coach Al said, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right call for Coach Alistair. Here's the 3-1 from Plain. Young lines this one into left center, and that's going to fall. Emily Young digging for second, and she's got herself a stand-up double with just one out here in the second. Number two takes two, and that's the best contact that we've seen so far this weekend from Stanford against Gabby Plain. That is hard to do. Just take a look at her timing. She goes down and gets it, gets the barrel in that right place for that low pitch. She got all of that ball. 11th double on the season for Emily Young after she went 0 for 2 with a strikeout yesterday against Gabby Plain. So just like that, runner in scoring position for the junior Emily Schultz. Schultz first pitch swinging foul. 
Well, Stanford has done a lot of their scoring, Jenna, as you know, in the first couple of frames. Really have scored a ton in the first frame, but in the first two innings, they've outscored their opponents 82 to 36. So it would be pretty big for obvious reasons if they could get to playing early. Right back up the middle, and here comes Young, and the play at the plate. She's in there, and Schultz is safe at second. Stanford with a 1-0 lead. Stanford scraped four hits off of plane yesterday, but this time they're stringing it together. That's that timely hitting factor that was missing a little bit yesterday. Young perfectly placed that ball right back where it came from, up the middle. Doesn't try to do too much with it exactly what Stanford needs right now. And just like that, Stanford with a 1-0 lead here in the first, and understandably, Coach Allister going for more, being aggressive, making a substitution. So Schultz will head to the bench. We take another look at Emma Young. He's going all the way, no hesitation. Stanford's got a lot of speed, especially at the top half of the lineup. Coach Allister known for sending them, trying to be aggressive on the base pads. So Caitlin Lim will take over for Schultz after she does the business with her bats. And now here's the freshman, Sydney Huff. Freshman, sophomore. COVID freshman, as we took to calling them yesterday. <laughs> That's right. for two with a strikeout that started uh, one of the prettiest double plays I've seen in years which is saying something here in the Pac-12 Flores thought about maybe throwing it down a second keeping Lynn honest Sydney Huff it's a good take we talked about that, both of these catchers with these teams, they're all over it. They're keeping a sharp eye on these base runners at all times. They're not afraid to make throws. T.O. misses Ryan, a 3-0, and and Flores wants to have a quick chat with Plain. Well, when it comes to the backstops, I mean, sixth year for Montana Dixon, pardon me, fifth year for Montana Dixon, the Stanford catcher, sixth year for the Washington backstop, Morgan Flores. Yeah, I mentioned how nothing really replaces experience and time and getting the reps, not only in college softball, but in this Pac-12 conference as well. And that's something that both of these teams have with their catchers, and that's incredibly important. Catchers have to be leaders on the field. But when you're a leader, just in terms of experience and as a teammate as well, that's even better. Pinch runner limits seconds. Just one out already, one run in. Here's the 3-0 to Huff. And Huff will take her base. So two on, just one out for the super senior, Christina Inoue. It's not often that we see Plain struggling to find that strike zone. She was so pinpoint with her location yesterday. And that does happen too, when you get to see more and more pitches off of somebody. I mean, you play each other so much in this conference, especially with the four game series. There's a lot of film that you're also able to watch because this is the last weekend of conference play. You've been able to see a lot of games. Stanford is an example of making that adjustment from day one to day two. Lance Glasso, the pitching coach, out to have a quick chat as we take a look at what is at stake. Bruins, as we mentioned, took care of business yesterday in Tucson. So if they win today, the Pac-12 conference title is theirs. If Arizona can figure out a way to take game two from the Bruins, then Washington still has a chance. But as you can see, a lot of stuff has to happen over the next couple of days. So it is UCLA's title to lose right now, the defending national champion back in 2019. Did not crown a national champion last season because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's see if that will help settle down the great Gabby Plain as Montana Dixon steps in. Speed on the bases for Stanford. 
Liam, the pinch runner out at second. Sydney Huff over at first. Here's that aforementioned backstop for the Cardinal. Dixon, first pitch, skies this one. Klingler will call playing off, and that is exactly what you want for Gabby playing. Right after having a little conversation, one pitch, and just like that, two down here in the second. Yeah, that's a big time out. Sometimes those are tough, the high ones. You got to see that ball all the way in. Klingler stuck with it, but when you're at the level that Gabby Plain is at, you know how to get out of jams. <laughs> like You've been there before. You're so good. You can work on that with the batter that's up to bat at the moment. And we've got a substitution. You were talking about Coach Allister's aggression, so it was going to be Christina Inouye, but with a couple runners on, get our first look of the weekend at the junior out of Virginia, Kate Cressy. She's been a go-to pinch hitter. Can be pretty clutch with when she gets those important hits as well. Two on, two down here in the second. One run already in for the Cardinal. Takes the first pitch, strike one. and misses strike two. And Lim almost cocks the ball, gets past Klingler, and Stafford has a 2 nothing lead. Caitlin Lim was threatening with those big leads, getting the attention of Morgan Flores, but no hesitation. As soon as that ball left her hand, she was taken off towards third. That's the aggressive base running that keeps Stanford competitive. You take a look, she's already there safely. There's a clean throw that saves a run. But that pop-up slide gets Kate and Lim there across the plate standing up. So Emily Schultz knocks in Emily Young, then heads back to the dugout, passes the baton to the pinch runner. Caitlin Lim, who uses her wheels. And just like that, 2 nothing Stanford. You said 0-1, I got 0-2. Okay. All right, good communication. We could hear it that time between our umpires, third base umpire. Jim Bertuzzi saying, wait a second, I thought you said 01. I've got 02 on my clicker. And Brandon Bloom says, no, I said 02. Thank you, though. Always love it when there's good communication between our officials. Okay, here's the 02 from Plain to Cressy. Good job by Flores to keep that one in front of her. And that's why you call him a backstop. You know, you got to block everything in that situation. That's huge. She made it look so easy, <laughs> so fluid. But that's what you have to have. So Gabby can have that confidence to throw any pitch right now because she knows Flores has her back. Sydney Huff, the speedy Huff. The sophomore down at seconds. Here's the one, two. Cressy swings and misses strike three. But Stanford able to get on the scoreboard. They've got a 2 nothing lead as we head to the third. That the other day. <laughs> Do you remember her response, Jenna? Yeah, she's like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then followed that up with, yeah, you know, if I'm being honest, should have been there about what, 10, 15 games yeah, ago? Should have been there earlier, yeah. Teams That's I've right. coached gave away a few here and there. Love the competitiveness of both of our coaches, all of our coaches really in the Pac-12 conference is Jaden Alchin, first pitch swinging, foul down the left field line. Look out. And we have a, a new left fielder who came in as the pinch runner in the last half of the inning. Caitlin Lim saw this yesterday as well, a defensive replacement. She and Schultz kind of tag team most games, right, Jenna? That's right. And Coach Alster said she does that in terms of defense. Caitlin Lim's really comfortable out there in left field. Schultz has sort of been in the lineup with her bat, played a lot of first base for most of her career, seen some left. But Caitlin Lim really comfortable out there and a lefty as well, so she can cover that line really nicely. So the sophomore, Alchin out of Huntington Beach, one for three yesterday with a run score. Off speed, oh, she was all over that one, just a little bit ahead of us. That timing was pretty good. It's tough to time and be on time because there's a difference between an off speed and a changeup. A changeup, you almost take too much off that pitch sometimes and hitters, even if they're out in front, they can reset and still make something happen with it. But when you take off just enough, just a little bit, that's what can keep people off balance. Here's the one, two. Swings and misses. Strikeout number four for Vodder. It's always got to feel good when you get a couple of runs across to this location. 
Oof, just perfectly placed. Breaking away to the lefty. Dixon also fired up too. That away, that a girl. And again, even though she's a sophomore, this is the dogs' first time seeing Vada because no Pac-12 play for any team last year because of COVID. So back to the top of the Washington lineup. Assist Bates takes strike one. And now that they've been through the lineup once, now they have seen Vodder. Everyone's seen her at this point. So now's the time where they can really put into play some of the adjustments that they know they need to make. Sis bounces in. One right back to Vodder. Two quick outs here in the third. This is how you keep momentum on your side. Your team does something great offensively. You come out here, you get a couple of quick outs. That's the stuff that Coach Alistair likes to see. She also likes to, to see this because don't be distracted by their 29 and 19 record, eight and 11 in Pac-12 play. 20 of the final 25 games of the season against top 13 teams in the country. Also fun to play in the Pac-12 as Klingler takes strike one, right, Jenna? I mean, that's just another day in the life of a Pac-12 <laughs> team. But I know a lot of us listen to the great Seven Innings podcast, right? ESPN, so many of our friends, BMO, and Horo, and Scarborough, and just everybody. And uh, I know they always like to talk about teams that we're not talking about, but should be. I, I would like to um, nominate the Stanford Cardinal, which I would also like to point out is saying something because I'm a Cal alum. So that takes a lot for me to get there. Yeah, people need to appreciate yes. how much it took for you to say that. But this team is not getting nearly enough credits and attention this season for what they have done. Taking two from the Ducks in Oregon, taking three from the Beavers who, that's another team that's, can we talk about Laura Berg and Mariah Maison? They, I don't know why, but they're they so good. Maybe because of their record too, but if they can get into the postseason, I would not want to face the Beavers. Oh, you do not want to face Mariah Masone. I mean, they went 13 innings in one of the games, nine innings in one of the other games when they were here on the farm playing Stanford. And it was a pitching duel between Elena Vodder and Mariah Masone. They are just very competitive. And it's tough, though, when you go up against these top 10, top 15 teams weekend in, weekend out. Here's the one, two to Klingley. Does a nice job to hold up. She did, yeah. Checking with our first base umpire, Fred Barker. But I think that's a good call. I'll take another look, see what you think. Seemed like the right call to me too. Yep, she holds the barrel back just enough in that situation, but we talked about a Montana Dixon. Gonna ask no matter what. <laughs> she went around, right? She went around, no? Nope. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Pitching with a 2-0 lead, here's the 2-2. Klingler to center field, over the head of Gindelsberger. Gindelsberger into second, and then over the head as she tried to chuck it back into second. So Klingler. Has herself a double here with two outs in the third. Also the best contact we've seen off of Elena Vodder so far. I mean, that's deep into center field, the deepest part of the ballpark. Gindelsberger did a pretty good job of fielding it off of the wall in that throw just a little bit too high. So the two bags in there for Klingler. Able to strand Bailey Klingler at second after that two out double just moments ago. So Stanford with a 2-0 lead here in game two of this four-game set. Second half of our doubleheader in just a couple of hours will be the non-conference game for folks. Maybe this is your first series of the season. All the Pac-12 coaches agreed. Let's make it easier and harder at the same time on ourselves. <laughs> and instead of just playing three-game series because we don't know about the non-con and it's going to be difficult to travel because of COVID, let's just play four against each other. Let's play a doubleheader on the second day, and the second game will be the non-conference game as Tegan Cows take strike one from Gaddy Plain. That's right, easier to get the games in considering COVID-19 and all the protocols they have to think about, but harder in terms of the level of play <laughs> that those extra games are bringing to the table. Cows flew out in her first at-bat. Rounds this one to second. Another great stab. Taryn Atley's awesome defensive weekend so far continues. That ball was hit pretty hard, so Atley did a great job of just reacting and seeing that ball and finishing the play. Just a bounce or two in front of her. A little sidearm action. Keeps it pretty clean here. That's all you gotta do, stop it. Keep it in front. No doubt about that one. 
All right, here, here is the center fielder whose name I should no longer try to pronounce in, an, in a quick defensive play like I did in the last half inning. Taylor Gindelsberger swings and misses, strike one. I actually asked her about that when she came on the Believe in Softball <laughs> podcast. Like, how much have you had to deal with the mispronunciations and all that stuff with your last name? And she said, oh, it's constant. <laughs> it's phonetic. It's just long. Mm -hmm. Taylor, it's a mouthful. Taylor, apologies. That was, <laughs> that was my bad. <laughs> Ball one. Taylor, three-time all-conference selection down at a powerhouse for sports in the desert, Hamilton High School, right down there in the Chandler, Arizona area. So USA Today, All-State to Max Preps, underclass All-American. Tries to bunt that time, and what a play by Morgan Flores! Oh, baby! The diving stab by the six-year. Just cat-like reflexes in that situation. Those are tough. You're in the, the squat. You have ground to cover. She made it look easy. The full extension, just pretty. That's pretty impressive for what did she call herself yesterday? A 58-year-old when we talked to her <laughs> after the game? <laughs> Not looking a day over 57 today, Morgan Flores. Here's Eleni Sparakis. Look at that. She's in the grass. This is a lot of backstop room here relative to a lot of other ballparks, too. Klingler right there to say, that was a darn impressive catch, Morgan. <laughs> Anything you can do to pick your pitcher up, not that Gabby Plain really needs it, but pitching from behind now. Stanford with a 2 nothing lead after plating a pair in the last half of the inning. One off of an air. The defense and great plays like that can give you back some momentum in these situations. Shirt fires Gabby up. 1-1 one, one to Sparakis. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look out. That is why before the game starts, our public address announcer says, beware <laughs> of foul balls that can get out quick. Oh, and that's why they added this netting from the end of the dugout on one side all the way to the end of the dugout on the other side. It was for fan safety for that exact reason. Here's the one, two, two down. Nobody on in the third. Just fouls that one off of herself again. Saw that in the last bet too. Grew up in the Silicon Valley, nearby Saratoga after being born in Mountain View. Left Saratoga High as the all-time hits leader, four-time team MVP in high school. A one-two, popped up. Is it gonna stay in play? It will, and the first baseman, Kelly Lynch, will take care of business. So, see if the dogs can play the couple. The fan reactions, you know, one side thinks that was a great call, the other side thinks it's a bad call, you know, <laughs> just that energy makes a difference. Sammy walked in the first. Bounce this one up and into the netting. Well, we mentioned it just a, a couple moments ago during our State Farm Showcase. What a great start it has been for Elena Vodder. Did not see her yesterday. A little chess match from Coach Allister. Thought she'd hold her. She goes off speed that time. Strike two. Let Gabby Plain just get one game under her belt before she threw Vodder. Yeah, and that's a little bit of a change and adjustment late in the season. Normally, Vodder starting that first game of every series, but there's a chess match going on with who they want her to go up against. Nine and one last year with a 1.48 ERA in her 15 appearances before the season was called because of the pandemic. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Reynolds. Swings and misses. Strikeout number five for Vodder. This is a tough Husky offense that she's going up against. And yesterday we talked about how they really did the fundamentals, you know, moving people over, getting them on base, hitting them in. But Vodder making it tough. Getting them to chase just a little bit. Then that drop off. 
30. And right back to it, strike one to he. With that said, a lot of game left still. Oh yeah. Here, and oh, yeah. you cannot count out the Washington Huskies at any time. And we all know at any level, the longer you see a pitcher, more experience you get against them. Usually that third time through a lineup got to be real careful, especially against batters like this. He almost had our first home run of the weekend last night. Matty Dwyer came on in relief for Tatum Boyd. He started the game yesterday for Stanford. First pitch, and he took it way down the left field line, just outside of the left field foul pole. Welcome to the game, Matty Dwyer. <laughs> That's right. It's a long strike to Dwyer. It's a, okay, I felt pretty good there for mm -hmm. he. <laughs> Senior out of Orange, California. In and out of the starting lineup over her career as the DP for the Dogs. Having a really great season this year. This time down the right field line foul. She waited on that off speed pretty well. And I think if the Huskies can get to that off-speed pitch off of Vodder, especially if they're behind in the count. That's when they're going to start to make things happen offensively. She's going to keep throwing it, and she should keep throwing it until they prove that they can hit that pitch. And that's been sort of that theme for Coach Tori Nyberg with Vodder and the rest of the pitching staff. Almost had he looking that time. Instead, the count goes full. Nobody on, one out. Stanford with a 2 nothing lead after plating a pair in the second. The 3-2. There's that off speed again. Fouled back into the screen. That's better, though. That's better. Earlier we saw some swinging and missing. A little bit out in front. With that off speed from Vodder, she's getting a piece here. The timing is improving. Swings and misses. Got her again. Six strikeouts now in county and for Elena Vodder. It's not just the off speed pitch itself that's effective, but it's the ability to throw that a couple times, then come back with the hard stuff. That also is going to keep hitters off balance. Great close by Elena Vodder. Kansas City, Missouri native, dominant so far today. Can she continue it against Kelly Lynch? Turns on that one. Look out, Heather Tarr. Lynch, the top overall recruit in her class just a couple of years ago. Had committed originally to Auburn out of high school. Tigers went through a coaching change in 2017, so Kelly reopened the recruitment. As we said yesterday, her high school teammate Lily Agan was already headed to Washington, so that, that helped Heather Tarr and the staff a little bit, get her fellow Georgian up to the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, yesterday we saw her pinch run, too, for Kelly Lynch. Mm -hmm. Lily, that is. Lynch also pitching for the dogs on and off this year. Reigning Pac-12 Freshman of the Week. Just awesome last weekend against Utah. Fourth honor of her career because she got it three times last year before the season was canceled. So that's the most all time for a Washington freshman. Three and one to Cat Natalie Lynch. Try to be the start of a potential two out rally for the dogs here in the fourth. She'll take the walk. That's a good at bat right now against Selena Vodder. Not chasing anything. Able to draw the walk, get on base. Even with two outs, this is an offense that can get going at any point in time. 
We used to call it a so what mentality when I was playing. Oh, there's two outs, so what? Oh, there's a little bit of sun in my eyes, so what? Right, it doesn't matter. At any time, you can get something going. Here's Taryn Atley. First pitch swinging. Huff, inning over. So Stanford still with a 2-0 lead as their bats will join us now. And, uh, there's been a few of them. 35 or 36. Happy birthday, at JC. Least, at least 34. Exactly. So, so what have you seen from the squad so far today? I mean, two runs, but one of them coming off the air. Otherwise, it looked pretty good for, from our perspective. What have you seen? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, first time you face a gal on the other side, she's doing a nice job so far. And a lot of ball game left to here for us to uh, try and push a couple across. you got to tie it before you can ever win it. Well, at this point, too, you got to keep it tight defensively, and obviously that's your specialty. We saw some great plays yesterday with Taryn Atley, the dive, all of that good stuff. What are the fundamentals that you guys focus on as a team? Well, I think first and foremost, you got to make play and catch fun. And uh, if you can do that on a daily basis, uh, teams have a chance to get better. And sometimes, uh, you know, you just assume that they know how to do it, and you want to do it a lot at a really high level. And, it starts with uh, enjoying showing up every day. In practice, I would imagine, I saw in your Twitter bio <laughs> that you are improving defense one top spin fungo at a time. <laughs> fungo is an art. As a former infielder, fungo is a big deal. So tell me more. Well, I mean, it's just a way that you can try and create different spin on the ball. And I think that um, it's something we enjoy. And like I said, I, I don't think there's any mystery to it, but I don't think people do it enough. Ali Conoshiro, the freshman in the box right now for Stanford. Looking to add on to their 2 nothing lead as playing bounces that one. Well, one thing we were uh, chatting about before the game, JT, was uh, the utility player. Um, and we're seeing a lot of that as I go through my lineups on both sides. I just would love to hear more when it comes to that position from, from your perspective as a coach. Is it a positive? Is it a negative? What does it mean? What do, what do you think of that spot? Uh, personally and for our club over here it's the ultimate compliment you can pay somebody uh, the fact that you in the past maybe it was somebody that wasn't very good offensively uh, and they could fill in some spots but when you're a utility player and you can play anywhere uh, you give your team a lot more chances and and we've got a few of them and we're lucky to have them yeah it's really always to me been sort of that x factor that allows you to have those options more depth in the lineup as well helps Oh, huge look. I mean, for us, Klingler, she's played all over the field for us, and she allows some other gals to get in the game. And as we all know, offense kind of ebbs and flows, and you don't always have it exactly how you want it. And when you have options, it, it just is, does a lot for your team. Count's gone full on Kanashiro. Here's the 3-2 from Gabby Plain. And gets her swinging. Strike three, so one out here in the fourth. How's that for playing catch? That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's the way you want to do it. It's four in a row, I think, lead off off, and uh, that's something we're trying to do. Good to see it. Well, when we talk about utility players, so key and helpful, but then got to talk about Sis Bates as well over there at Chursop. I mean, what an anchor for your infield. What makes her so good, other than the obvious? Well, I, I could talk for hours, and we don't have enough time to do that. And she wouldn't <laughs> want me to do it anyway. Emily Young on that note, right to Sis Bates, and I'm going to call that one a broadcaster jinx. <laughs> I'll take that. I will own that one. Yeah, Kate Scott, I think you're uh, buying Sis Bates a, yeah. a burger after yeah, her career's over. We don't want a violation or anything. That's definitely on me, Sis, because it is so rare that we see something like this from one of the best defensive players in the entire country at any position. So Emily Young down at first. Well, Another thing we were talking about, JT, happy to be joined by, I like to call him the defensive coordinator for the dogs, as Emily Schultz steps in here. Uh, was, let's take a look at Taryn Atley, taking care of that, two down, as Young heads down to second. Um, but we were talking about, before that, only 18 airs, so still, JT, only 19 airs on the season. And, and what was your response to me? Uh, I, I didn't know we had that many. <laughs> <laughs> that is so few in comparison to so many of the rest of the teams in the country. Um, what is the key? How are you able to do that season in and season out? Well, I think you have to emphasize it. And I think what you emphasize, you get. And if you practice it and you emphasize it and you talk about it and you do it, then good things can happen. But if you're constantly changing your tune and you're trying the latest, greatest 
thing that comes across your desk. Um, I think sometimes you lose sight of the basic things and making basic fun is something I think we do a really good job of and it starts with Heather Tarr at the top and Coach Glass, he does a phenomenal job with our pitching and that's kind of the secret to great defense. It starts out there in the circle. It's the 1-0 from Plain. Popped here you go, sister, right here. Yeah, there she goes. Sis taking care of business. Well, JT, happy birthday. Appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. All right, sis and the dogs coming to bat in the fifth, trying to cut into this 2-0 lead. You're watching Pac-12 Bay Area, home of the Cal Bears and the Stanford Carp. Here on Pac-12 Bay Area and Washington is Jalen Alchin. Oh, man, our second baseman have been sensational for the first two games. Taryn Atley for Washington and Sydney Huff for Stanford. Just crushing it. I mean, and that's a tough angle to make that throw. First of all, you got to see that ball all the way in. But you kind of have to throw it behind you. So we've seen some sidearm action because of that as well. And they make it look so smooth and easy. But it's not. There's a little bit of art to that. Kaipa, California native, Sydney Huff. Sophomore now. But again, this is her first Pac-12 campaign as Sis Bates, the fifth year, who's probably going to be mad at both of us, Jenna, because <laughs> of the jinx we just had on her in the last half of the inning. But then quickly came back and got the final outs in that fourth inning. I'm trying to get the offense going here in the fifth. Bates and the Dogs 40 and 9 on the season, 17 and 4 in Pac-12 play. Picked to finish third in the Pac-12 this year. Off speeds right in there for Vonner. Strike two. Just such a pretty pitch. Tough to hit. I mean, that's why she throws it early in the count, too, to jump ahead. Because as a hitter, your plan's typically not, oh, I want to go up there and farm. And it is the home team, the Stanford Cardinal, with a 2 0 lead right now over Gabby Plain and the fifth ranked Washington Huskies. Jenna Becerra and Kate Scott with you. And uh, anybody who's seeing that and feeling a little bit surprised, Jenna, I don't think should be surprised because of what Stanford has done, and especially done in the second half of this Pac-12 conference season. Well, and it's the second time they're going against Gabby Plain. Gabby Plain is a top three pitcher in the country, no doubt, not even a conversation really about it. But Stanford made some contact off of her yesterday, made some adjustments today, and got that timely hitting. They compete game in and game out. And that's why you can never overlook them. Here's the fifth year, the catcher. Lakewood, California native Montana Dixon to lead off of the card here in the fifth. First pitch, swinging strike one. Plane's been pretty solid too since that two run inning back in the second. And that's what the great pitchers do too. They come back, they get reset, they do what they do best. The 0 1 to Dixon. Strike two. Playing four time Pac 12 pitcher of the week this year. Was the NFCA pitcher of the week one of those weeks way back at the start of March? Fastest Husky to 50 wins ever last season. I'm not saying something. There's been some good arms up on Mount Lake. Here's the 0 2 to Dixon. she's looking to or is hoping to be on the Australian national team for the Olympics later this year. So you got Stanford going up against Rachel Garcia, going to represent Team USA decent, in Tokyo. Decent pitcher, yeah. <laughs> and then right back at it, here we are, second game against Gabby Plain, the Australian stud. One, two. Dixon, high into the air, down the left field line, and Reynolds will put it away. One out here in the fifth. It's a good job by Reynolds. There's a little bit of sun for the left side of the field right now. It's coming from Sunken Diamond to our right and sort of shining onto the field. Some of the shadows are starting to creep. So you gotta use that glove as a blocker for you in that situation. 
So first time seen playing today, Christina Inouye, because her first at bat was given to Kate Cressy because there was a couple of runners on in that second inning. So Jessica Allister just being super aggressive said, I want to bring in <laughs> a little bit different bat, a little bit different look. Didn't work out for Cressy, but we both really like the aggression from Coach Al there. And that's part of that sort of chess match that's going on. You don't normally see that for at bat number one in a game. So this is at bat number one for Inouye. That one misses low, ball two. Huntington Beach native. I started 217 of the 218 games she's played in her Stanford career. Two zero. Takes there, strike one. A little more familiarity with playing as well. Just this being her fifth year here at Stanford. Gabby Plain's a true senior. You can make some adjustments over the years too if you see them so much. Two one fouls over the netting. Look out. And on that note, Inouye and all the super seniors for Stanford and obviously everybody below them looking for their first ever win over Gabby Plain. Plain perfect so far against the Cardinal in her Washington career. Here's the 2-2. Okay, foul back to the netting. And we saw this at the tail end of the game yesterday, right? That eight or nine pitch battle between these two. That's right, and again, not only is Inoue familiar with Gabby Plain, but Gabby Plain's also a little bit familiar with Inoue from mm -hmm. just facing each other over the years. It's fun to see those kind of battles come head to head. So we go again, the 2-2. Two -two. And we'll go again. It's on top of it. Hits it right back into herself. Again, no sting, but Gabby playing just too much spin. It happens. Six pitches and counting in this at bat. Make it seven. Well, you know I had success against the dogs years ago in her freshman season, five for 10 in the three-game set against the, at that time, seventh-ranked Washington Huskies. One of her two career four-hit games in that series. So looking for her first hit of this series, the 2-2. Down the left field line foul. Well, she's on it. She's on it. And this really is a situation, you got two strikes, so you're just protecting. Plate coverage is the name of the game. Gotta just hit the ball where it's pitched. Don't overthink it. See the ball, hit the ball, react. Plane can go anywhere at any time with the pitches that she has. You know what to Schultz. Sis Bates from deep in the hole. And she got her two down. That's that Sis Bates defense that we've seen all season long, all career long. That's tough to do. I mean, deep in the hole like that, you got to get rid of it. Use your whole body for that throw. Well executed. I was thinking anyone but sis, right? <laughs> Emily Young here at Stanford might have something to say about that. I know we got a number of other great shortstops here in the Pac-12. Two down for Tegan Kals. Tegan was the queen of triples last season, setting the Stanford program record. 19. Pops this one up to first base. And Lynch will put it away. Can. The best contact we've seen off of Otter so far was Klingler, that deep one to center field off the wall. 
I'm sure Washington would love for her to repeat here in this at bat. Yeah, singled in the first inning, as you said, doubled in the third off the center field wall. If we were playing in a different yard, maybe in Pac-12 play, that easily could have been out of here. Yeah, or in Utah with a little bit more altitude. <laughs> that would have been way gone in Utah. <laughs> She would have been trotting to first. She would have known as soon as it left her bat. The 1-1. One, one. She is on it right now. You can see why she became the first Husky since Ali Aguilar back in 2017 to hit the 50 run and 50 RBI mark in the same year. First pack 12 er to do that. She did that last weekend. Obviously helps it. Her dog teammates are usually getting on base in front of her for her to knock them in, but that is darn impressive stuff from the junior. That is a key part, too, and that's why you, that's part of how you put together a lineup. This one just reaches the bat out right, though, to Tegan Cows. And the Stanford defense, it hasn't just been Vodder. The defense behind her has been sensational so far today. Yeah, Vodder's doing great, but letting things just roll using her defense helping herself out too in some situations sydney huff just solid as ever over there at second base sparakis just keeping it in front of her doing what they gotta do to stay in this game and keep this lead so far here's morgan flores had i think our web gem of the day today diving lane full out as a Stanford batter popped it up just behind the Washington catcher. The 1 slammed to shorts, and Emily Young can't handle it. So tough one for Sis Bates a couple of innings ago, and a tough one for Young there. So Flores at first with just one out here in the sixth. That happens. And on the defensive side and the offensive side, Flores is doing a great job. Absolutely the web gem from today. I mean, when you can steal outs for your pitcher like that, that's the stuff that Gabby Plain says, man, I so appreciate my teammates. So Flores does her job. And just like we saw the aggression from Stanford's coach Alistair, understandably down 2 nothing here in the six. Bring on the pinch runners. Bring on the speed. The junior from... Buckley, Washington, Megan Vandegrift. As the cleanup hitter for Washington. Steps in, Sammy Reynolds. Ball one. See the corners crashing on that one. Reynolds can leave the yard. She's got a lot of power. 11 home runs on the season, but she's also got a lot of speed. So you see Inoue and Sparakis well in front of the bases so they don't get beat in front in this situation. There's that power from Reynolds you were talking about. That one out of play. Take a look at the Washington offense so far this season. Pretty darn good, no surprise there. Yeah, just it speaks to how well Elena Vodder's throwing today when you're going up against this kind of offense. Also means there's still a shot here. They got five more outs to play with to try to make some sort of comeback. There's the 1-1 one -one to Reynolds. Swings and misses, strike two. Great pitch from Vodder. Take a look again. That's when you know you're feeling it, when you can get hitters to hesitate like that. You're in a really good rhythm. There's the one, two. Off speed, just missed. It's a good idea. Even better eye, though, because when you have two strikes in that situation, it is so easy to chase something like that. We've seen that earlier in this game, so that's good control by Reynolds. Botter working quickly. As Reynolds fouls that one down the first baseline. Two-time Pac-12 freshman of the week. She was also the Pac-12 pitcher of the week after going two and one in Eugene. She was in the circle for both of their wins over the Ducks. The one loss coming in a relief appearance. Swings and misses. Second strikeout of Reynolds today. Two down. That is a huge out at a huge time. Getting that second out, that again, breaking away from the lefties. So hard to hit. Whew, she's tough. 
trying to add a win over the number five team in the country to her ever expanding resume, Elena Vodder. And well, he, the DP, fouls that one back, strike one. Such a big out because now you still have the runner at first. You have some options. You can get the force at second if anything's hit up the middle. It's two outs, not one out, right? Like, yep. those are the little things that if you can stack them together, they put you in a position to win. It's already struck out he twice today. And the pinch runner, Megan Vandergrift, very fast over first. That one misses inside ball two. Dixon will just take a walk out to chat with her young pitcher. And she's good at that too. She's good at taking initiative with all of her pitchers. And that's a special part about catching that I don't think is talked about enough. You have to manage a lot of different styles, a lot of different personalities with whoever you're working with in the circle. Stanford happens to have seven pitchers on their roster in total. So it's a lot of work you got to do in the bullpen. And she's so good at being able to read her pitchers and work with them from pitch to pitch. So runner on first, two down. Here's the 2-1. He to right center field, and that one's going to be off the wall. And Vandergrift is headed home, and she will score. Just like that, we've got a 2-1 ball game here in the sixth. Talk about making an adjustment. That's how you do it, Noel. He, I mean, great job getting solid barrel on that pitch. Only seen that a couple times off Vodder so far. It's a little bit over the plate, just a bit, but does a great job of going with it. Again, bounces right in front of the wall. Get her in standing up, but that cutoff throw, you gotta be accurate in that situation. If Gindelsberger can hit the cutoff man and hit Sidney Huff in the chest, might have saved a run. And the aggression, understandably, continues for Heather Tarr and Washington as they try to tie or take the lead here in the sixth. The senior out of San Diego, who we saw once yesterday, Livy Sheely over at first now for Noel He. This is Kelly Lynch. Lynch has walked and struck out against Vonner in her two at bats so far today. You like to see her come back with a strike there, too, after giving up the big hit. Run comes across. How do you react in that situation? Again, two down. Yo one. Lynch just able to get a piece of that off speed, but not able to do anything with it. But the lead cut. She's just so good. I mean, both sides of the ball, pitchers who hit is what I love. I actually asked her when she was on the Believe in Softball podcast, do you consider yourself a pitcher who hits or a hitter who pitches? Mm. And she said, you know what? I take a lot of pride in my hitting because people used to think, oh, you're a pitcher, you shouldn't be hitting. So I think I'm going to go with hitter who pitches. Okay. I beg your pardon. I think I just said it was 2 nothing here in addition to Arizona. 2-1 here now as Washington able to plate their first run in the last half of the inning. Gindelsberger to left. And that one was going to be a tough play. Any way you cut it out in left. So Gindelsberger, a leadoff base knock for Stanford here. Just a great job throwing the hands out there, going with this pitch. Get just enough, get it out to the green, out of the infield. It's exactly what Stanford needed to answer to that one run in the top half. Lily Sheely, who we saw as a pinch runner in the last half of the inning, is taking over for Sammy Reynolds in left. That didn't look like Reynolds, so. You're like, isn't she a lefty? I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> Thanks to our camera operators for helping us out. Eleni Sparakis, see you later. And just like that, Stanford has a 4-1 lead. Talk about clutch. What an immediate impact she's had in this Stanford lineup this season. Her first time on the farm. 
has been amazing. That's so, so clutch. To do it off someone the likes of Gabby Plain as well. I mean, she knew it the second it came off her back. First hit of the weekend off of Gabby Plain, and it is a big one. Just after Washington cuts the lead in half. Look at the grad transfer. Heck yeah, put that finger up in the air, Lenny. <laughs> That's awesome. Sixth home run of the season. Now an even 30 RBI for the, again, local Saratoga High School alum. Giving our team a little breathing room. As Brooke Nelson, the sophomore, will pinch hit for Ali Kaneshiro. Oh no, pardon me, you're right. Apologies. I have a numerical problem up here in the booth. <laughs> it is Kanashiro. On the 1 0. Pops this one up to second. And Atley is there for the first out. Again, we talked about how you're going to react, right? We talked about that with Botter after giving up the big hit. The run comes across for Gabby playing this at bat against Kanashiro was so huge because how do you react in those situations? How do you come back from that? And she did a great job of getting the out right there. And that'll bring up the junior who got the last rally starting with her double, Emily Young. So Gabby played 28 and one on the season, has given up just eight runs on the year. Stanford with four so far in this ball game. Efficiency too, four runs off five hits. Eight home runs, pardon me. Maybe I should just step away from the microphone for this whole <laughs> half of the inning. Well, it's been a little bit of a whirlwind. There's been a lot going on. <laughs> what a sixth inning. I gotta tell you, I appreciate the masks. Sometimes it makes communicating a little bit difficult. So, just gonna step aside. Here's the one one to Young. Strike two calls. Tell you what, this is the loudest that the Stanford dugout has sounded so far in this weekend as well. A lot more energy. They were doing the go Stanford chance earlier with the fans because we have them in the stadium again. One out, here's the one, two from Plain to Young. That one misses low ball too. And you can understand the excitement because the dogs have an eight game win streak in this series dating all the way back to 2017. So there's very few members of this Stanford squad who have ever beaten Washington in their careers. 2-2. Young again towards the gap. And a great first step by Jaden Nolchin. And a good solid contact, getting better at bat to at bat against Gabby Plain. But again, as a pitcher, your job, just get these hitters to just miss. Just miss enough to let the outfield do what they're gotta do for anything in the air and roll things up for your infield. I'll bring up the sophomore, Caitlin Lim. Two down here in the sixth. Big two run shot from the grand transfer, Eleni Sparakis. Took a very close 2-1 game after the Dogs played their first run in the last half inning. And now a comfortable, as comfortable as a lead over Washington can be. 4-1 <laughs> lead here in the sixth. Lim up and over the outstretched glove of Sis Bates. How about the sophomore from Irvine, California? Lim had such a great start to her career in the shortened season last year, led the team in home runs, felt really good offensively. Been a little tougher so far this year, but again, so comfortable out there and left. Coach Alistair said, if we can just get her going, she'll be such a great part of the lineup for us moving forward. And started 24 of the 26 games she played last year in left. Going off your point as a true freshman. Now really as the defensive replacement this year. Here's. Fellow sophomore Sydney Huff trying to get a little 
Two out magic going, and Lim is going. Here's the throw, and she's in there. All the credit in the world to Caitlin Lim's base running so far in this game. She had that delay steal, ends up scoring earlier. Here she is, diving head first, getting in there safely. A tough to run on Morgan Flores, by the way. Yeah, we've been talking about our catchers all weekend <laughs> because they are just good at everything. But Lim now perfect three for three on the season in stolen bases, and she's put herself in scoring position for Huff. That one up and over our heads. Strike one. I'm still looking for her first hit off of Gabby playing this weekend. Nine RBI for Huff on the season. The one one. This is outside ball two. interesting too she's hitting 248 on the season overall but 276 with runners in scoring position 257 with two outs right it's interesting how hitters sometimes step up you see those higher averages when more pressure is on ahead in the count here 2-1 bounces that one foul count goes to two and two we mentioned it yesterday some of these players playing for the great travel teams in southern california half a Corona Angels alum. Hit over 450 in her club career. It was a 2019 PGF All-America honoree. Coach Al stole her away, brought her to NorCal. Here's the 2-2. Bounces that one back to Plain. And a nice play by Gabby Plain. But how about the swing of Eleni Sparakis? A two-run shot. It's four to one. The dogs down to their final three outs. All Elena Vonner needs to pick up her first career win over the Washington Huskies. It would be Stanford's first win over the dogs since 2017. But if we know anything about Terry Natley and the fifth-ranked dogs, it's that they are not going to go quietly. That's true. Plenty of times in the past where three outs has been enough to overcome that obstacle. A couple of ground outs so far for Atley. Take strike one. Rotter has been so good today for Stanford. Again, Washington didn't get to see her yesterday. This is the second appearance for Gabby Plain this weekend. Pass that one right back to us. That was coming right at me if there wasn't the net there. Whew. Should have brought your glove today, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would have helped me with that one. <laughs> I think I would have been the kid diving under the table. <laughs> Heather Tarr has been dominant in her coaching career. It would be Coach Jessica Allister's first head coaching win over the dogs. Yeah, first year is back in 2018. Had the big turnaround year in 2019, and then of course last year didn't even get to play him. This year, here we are, four games on tap for this weekend. Heather picked up win number 699 in her head coaching career with yesterday's 4-0 series opening victory. So she waiting patiently for win number 700. And again, fouls that one back, staying alive. Seen a lot of great fight actually from hitters on both sides today. Going deeper into the counts. Nice foul ball, staying alive with two strikes. That's the stuff you like to see as a coach. One, two. Atley down the right field line, just foul. But we are seeing why Atley has started both of our first two games, as Heather Tarr told us when we talked to her a couple of years ago. She is such a great clutch player, especially in the postseason. And I mean, this is pretty much the postseason, last series of the regular season. So, whew, Atley's looked good. Yeah, when the pressure's on, how do you perform? And she's got so much experience in those situations. 
Just able to get a piece of that one to stay alive. That's all you gotta do, stay alive. Sometimes that's it. You don't have to take the huge hack. If you don't like that pitch, get it out of there. Seven strikeouts and counting for Elena Vonner, the Sanford ace. Atley, Inouye, one out. It's a great fight from Atley, but such a huge out for the Stanford Cardinal. That first at bat was going to be huge in terms of who's going to have a little bit of momentum here. If Washington gets that runner on, they're starting to feel like they got some momentum in their house. But with Stanford, if they could set the tone early, that was huge for Vodder. So two outs to go. Freshman Sarah Willis. Struck out and grounded out so far today. Water 20 and 8 overall on the year. Willis found that one off the plates. And not foul, pardon me. Fair off the plates, and that'll be two outs. Yeah, a little bit of a tussle there as yeah. they're trying to make the play, but it does look like it was in front of the base. So technically, yes, that's a fair ball. Dixon fighting and scratching to make sure she got it. I think Willis just didn't quite think, but that spin, that's what's tough. The spin actually brought it back into fair territory. Heads up, though, by Montana Dixon. She was all over it. No surprise. So it all comes down to Jadlin Alchin. The sophomore takes strike one. Good line. Woo. Good thing we've got an umbrella <laughs> over our third base cam. Everybody okay down there? Get the thumbs up. Woo, just missed him on the grassy mole. Watch out, Jeff. You okay? Okay, Jeff's okay. Keep up the great work down there. Here's the 0-2. Start sign, ball one. I think this crowd knows it's been a while since Stanford knocked off the Washington Huskies. Sure do. They're already standing up, clapping. Just want to get one more strike, one strike away from a huge win. Oh, Jim just able to stay alive. That's that off speed again, though. We saw that with Atley. Alton didn't even finish the swing. She's like, all right, yep, we're going to foul that off. <laughs> get that out of here. One for three yesterday. Washington won the opener. The one, two. Did not go. Two and two. Gotta bring some drama to the end of the game, right? Got to. Sanford hasn't beaten the dog since 2017. Alchin. Down the left field line, just out of the reach of Caitlin Lim. That was a long run, but Lynn has wheels just a little bit too far. Yeah, she's smiling because she was on her horse on that one diving, trying to make it happen. <laughs> they, they desperately want to close this thing out as soon as they can. Again, this game one of our double header here today. I have another one for you in just about 30 minutes after. This game comes to an end. Stanford with a 4-1 lead. Here's the 2-2. Got her swinging. What a way to end it. Strikeout number eight for Elena Vodder. Stanford's first win over the Dogs since 2017.
Brilliant performance by Elena Vodder, and even more so, add in the offensive output and the cushion that they gave her. Just an excellent job by the freshman. What a performance by the COVID freshman. This is her first ever trip through Pac-12 play. Did not get to see any Pac-12 opponents as COVID canceled the Pac-12 season last year. First ever appearance against the always top five Washington Huskies and eight strikeouts. What what a way to go. And she's just incredible. That off speed pitch made sense almost poetic for that to be the ending of this game because it was so effective for her all game long and she's just going to keep rolling. 106 total pitches from Bonner. 73 strikes. That's how you do it. She is going to be our Rawlings player of the game here for game two as we take a look back at some of the highlights for the sophomore Elena Vonner. They're so cool and confident, mixing pitches, going away to lefties, getting them off balance, going into the righties, help herself out, be that fifth infielder, along with some solid Cardinal defense and that off speed, just absolutely killer. We've moved from